business and legal aspects of Amazon Leaks. Amazon Leaks have exposed both legal and illegal offshore companies that promote in a way corruption internationally. These leaks have also made various distinguished personalities involved in legal or illegal business in the world. We are here to discuss this subject as an issue of international corruption. We will not discuss about the individuals involved at all in the country or elsewhere. This is an effort to understand business and legal aspects of phenomena as an academic issue and its implications on the world politics. Therefore, I am sure all questions asked by our honorable audience will be raised in this spirit. We take questions after completion of all the four presentations. We are informed with distinguished speakers that the August gathering include diplomats, members of Pakistan Institute of International Affairs and Civil Society and Academia Faculty and Students of International Relations. I will request now uh, Professor Dr. Tanvir Khalid, who is a renowned political scientist, former chairman of the Department of Political Science, University of Karachi, former dean of social sciences, Dr. Zarafi University, and a busy political analyst in the town. Uh, she will uh, introduce the subjects and also the speakers of today's session. I request the value of the Thank you. On behalf of uh, the members of the Pakistan Institute of International Affairs, its chair, Dr. Mar Masuma Hassan, the secretary, Dr. Amjad Sakib, I feel it my pleasant duty to welcome excellencies, speakers, participants, researchers, ladies and gentlemen. This subject today is a great concern not only for Pakistanis but also internationally. So we are going to focus on that aspect of the discussion. Our worthy speakers, I will introduce them afterwards. I would just like to give an introduction first of the Panama Leaks, which as are so commonly discussed at all levels in the present times. We have to discuss the legal and business aspects of the issue. But Panama Leaks is dubbed as Panama Papers on objection of the Panamanian government that it is hindering or it is affecting its international image. So we use the word now, the Panama Papers. It is considered to be one of the biggest leaks in the history of data journalism and it is likely to be most explosive basing on the nature of the revelations which are expected. The Panama Papers are 11.5 million in number leaked documents of financial and attorney client information of more than 2 million offshore entities. These documents were created by a Panamanian law firm and corporate service provider, that is the Mossack Fonseca, which shows that important individuals, whether they are in public service or as government officials, they can hide their personal financial information, considering it private. Though offshore business entities are not always illegal, reporters found that some of the Mossack Fonseca shell corporations were used for illegal purposes, like tax evasion, like uh, fraud, and 
evading international sanctions. Some investigators believe that the figures in sports, world politics, and uh, arts, they were legal. But then the same was questioned by other group of investigators who tried to propel a uh, concept of moral and ethical impropriety, if not legal, in all respects. According to the ICIJ, that is the International Consortium for Investigative Journalism, some offshore companies do seem to have broken exchange laws, violated trade sanctions, and have stemmed from political corruption. The whistleblower of these leaks he, to the German newspaper, John Dewey, did, did it because of the levels of inequalities in wealth and the grave injustices resulting therein. The investigation took place one year to complete and then it was leaked to the newspapers and it came in the newspapers on the 3rd of April 2016. As the issues of such magnitude which have been given, uh, which have more questions raised than answers given, these issues have to be discussed with all their pros and cons the likely impact, repercussions and implications they are going to have, including the political implications internally and externally, and these have to be evaluated and discussed. So it is in, but we should know that it is indeed an important milestone in the use of data journalism, software tools and mobile collaboration. As a political fallout, in addition to the much covered business dealings of the British Prime Minister David Cameron, the Prime Minister of Iceland, 61 family members, associates, and uh, links to government officials, they have been outlined and they have names have come out uh, at the international level. These include the former Sudanese president, the Emir of Qatar, the Prime Minister of Georgia, Prime Minister of Ukraine, family members of the Prime Minister of Pakistan, officials of the Chinese government, son of the Malaysian Prime Minister, and all of these. And we expect that at an international level this is going to be tackled because sometimes it is considered legal and sometimes not. So we expect that the G20 summit in July 2016 in India is expected to strengthen international cooperation for exchange of tax information between tax authorities regarding in the financial dealings and at the same time reinventing three broad guidelines. They are information exchange on request assigned a multilateral agreement in information standards and a commitment to implement automated information exchange by 2017 on 2018. The worthy speakers for today who are going to give their opinion on specific issue, uh, angles of the issue that is political, legal and financial I would like to introduce them. Our first speaker today was Mr. Sayyid Muhammad Shapar Zaidi, a very prominent senior partner in Producer and Company in charge of Chartered Accountants, very well known in top business circles, and has been who has been in many coveted positions as caretaker minister for finance. Board of Revenue and Excise and Taxation Government of Sin, as President South Asian Federation of Accountants and the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Pakistan, as Director Karachi Stock Exchange, as Founder Trustee of SIUD, that is Sin Institute of Urology and Transplantation, Honorary Individual Member of the Pakistan Business Council, 
having extensive interaction with regulatory authorities on domestic and international levels. And above all, he has to his credit two books, A Journey for Clarity and Pakistan, Not a Paid State. I regret to announce that because of his um, personal business, he had to leave immediately last night for the UK. And I'm thankful to Mr. Mohammad Raza, his colleague and tax partner of the AF Ferguson in Pakistan, who is going to read out his views in the paper he has left. You can, and he is going to take up the questions regarding that issue. Mohammad Raza has extensive experience of tax services of some of the largest national and multinational corporations. He is currently responsible for tax consultancy, advisory and compliance services, and has a rich experience of international taxation and has also been involved in structuring transactions for acquisition and disposal of business operations in view of tax and regulatory efficiency. We have with us the Honorable Justice Muhammad Shaikh Usmani. I don't think he needs an introduction, but I would like to express the various aspects of his contribution in Pakistan. Senior, he has been Senior Advocate of the Supreme Court of Pakistan and former Judge of the Sindh High Court, and he has given many judgments on human rights issues. That is being his main concern. He has a keen in interest in history and international relations and has been a participant in the media channels on regional and international issues. The third speaker today would be speaking on investigative aspects of the Panama Leaks. He is Mr. Ava Masood, a well-known and renowned columnist and political analyst, known for very boldly expressing his views with a very clear and transparent approach to authority issues of national